Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Dr. Scott. Thank you for stopping by and having coffee with me in the morning on this uh, second day of January. Kind of fascinating. Uh, for, we're going to be talking today about the 31-day morning routine challenge, which again, for those of you in this group, uh, it was a very, very popular program we had last year and um, decided to revamp some things and do it just in this group here. And obviously, if you're in the group, you probably know there's not a whole bunch of members in this group, which is fine with me. Uh, I think I've had this group open for like a, a year and a half, but I just haven't done anything with it. Finally decided to do something with it for several good reasons. So a little housekeeping first before we get into the morning routine series for today. For the most part, I'm trying to give one of the revamps I made about this program was to just give the content, not any of the fluff. And again, I, I don't think it was fluff last year, but I was doing a show. So we had a, you know an intro and then the content and then other stuff. We're just going to be doing the content this year. But since this is the first one I'm doing inside the group, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, so uh, first and foremost, the reasons I'm doing it in the group, uh, as opposed to out there on Facebook, uh, is because I've been talking a lot about how distracting Facebook can be. I'm working on decreasing my digital distractions. Uh, one of my New Year's resolutions is to never take any of my uh, technology inside the house. Uh, so I mean, I can do my workout here, but I don't want to be distracted when I'm around the kids or whatnot. So I chose to not be part of the noise. You know, I've always made uh, jokes about that. Like, uh, you know, don't open your email in the morning unless it's mine or, you know, uh, get off Facebook unless you're watching one of my videos. I decided to decrease my participation uh, in that um, distracting world. Now, we're still going to be putting posts out on Facebook and whatnot, trying to get people into this group, you know, but, but they're just little bite-sized pieces as opposed to being here. I want the people that see my stuff to, to want to see my stuff. So if you don't want to see my stuff and you're in my group, go ahead and leave. I'm not going to be offended. Uh, I'm a pretty laid-back dude. But if you're in the group, I, I like to think that you, uh, you chose to be here because uh, I don't add anybody just randomly. And I would really like to, for you to get engaged. So I'd rather have 70 engaged people uh, in my content than being blasting it out to thousands of people on Facebook. So that's, that's my choice for being in this group. So I do ask for you to please engage. I do ask for you to invite uh, a few of your chiropractor friends who might benefit from this uh, and try to help me grow the group because I really think what we're going to be creating here every, – everybody who's seen me knows that I put out a lot of content. But I'm going to be putting it all out here now. So – you're going to get a lot of value out of being in this group. Uh, so again, please invite your friends that are chiropractors. Have them come join us as well. Having said that, uh, just a funny thought when I said January 2nd. Does anybody remember how cold it was last year on January 1st and January 2nd? Because I went back and watched my show from last year just to kind of prepare for today's show. And uh, I saw that it was negative 20 today here in Iowa, January 2nd last year. On January 1st last year, it was negative 23 uh, and I made a joke about people, you know, like, oh, that wind chill must be killing you. But no, that wasn't the wind chill. It was, it was genuinely negative 23. The wind chill was negative 47 last year on New Year's Day. Uh, just brought that back to memory. I was like, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> that was cold. Anyways, let's get into the content. So again, we're working. And last year, my clients that participated in the 31-day morning routine challenge really, really, really had some great success. Uh, had a good job put together. I've had a great morning already. Uh, I came out here. I did my journaling. I did a little bit of meditation, which I'm not that big on. I got my workout in. Uh, I've been inside to get my, uh, I've had my water, got my coffee, uh, which has some supplements in it. Um, and then right after this show, which is part of my morning routine, I'm going to run inside and spend some time with the family and cook them breakfast and get that nutrition out of the way. So that's kind of all my morning routine coming together. And again, that's what we're trying to put together for you. So over the 31 days, we're going to give you one little tip every day. Uh, it's going to be a small piece. And again, this little housekeeping today. Starting tomorrow, these shows will be like two to four minutes long. Um, so you'll get a, a good piece of content. So let's get to that piece of content. My feeling is that you can't have a great morning routine without at least a decent evening routine. If you're one of those people that falls asleep on the couch and then just runs up to bed or... Um, you know, watches TV until that last minute and then just turns it off and goes to bed. I feel like you're doing yourself a great disservice as far as your morning routine is concerned, as far as your productivity is concerned. What I would ask of you to do uh, is to prepare your nighttime routine and choose when you go to bed. Choose um, how you go to bed and choose your routine at nighttime. So I say that, um, meaning that you need... 
I say five minutes for the brain dump. You probably need 15 minutes at night to get a good morning, good evening routine going. Uh, so the next three days, we'll be talking about that evening routine before we get into the morning routine stuff. As far as an evening routine is concerned, and again, you choose as far as how your, how your lifestyle is set up. For me, uh, I used to put the kids to bed. Uh, then I go downstairs and watch TV a little bit with the wife. And then, uh, you know, at some point I would go to bed. She usually stays down a little bit longer. Uh, she likes to fall asleep in front of the TV. That's, that's, that's her own thing. Um, I very seldom watch that TV anymore. And that's not to say that I'm perfect and I don't watch TV. I probably watch a lot of TV actually, but I watch most of it on my iPad when I'm traveling uh, or Netflix. So I may, I tape stuff and I take it with me and, and I watch it when that's what I'm doing, but I don't watch much before bed. Not really the point of this story. The point of the story is to pick a time to go to bed. If you know what time you need to wake up for your morning routine, pick a time that you're going to bed and have a routine getting into it. So if you say you're going to bed at 10, then you know 9.40, you should be up doing your routine, your hygiene and whatnot. And one very, very important part of your uh, hygiene would be, or not hygiene, of your evening routine would be a brain dump. And what I mean by a brain dump is, well, exactly like it sounds, is to get everything out of your brain that's stopping you from sleeping. And maybe it's not stopping you from sleeping, but it makes you a little restless. And it's the stuff that you get into bed, your brain starts to quiet down because you're not watching TV anymore. You don't have those digital distractions. So your brain starts to think about stuff. And and unfortunately, (laughs) kind of aside here, but everybody remember Tetris from back when I was in college? So, geez, 93-ish. Uh, playing Tetris on the computer, and then you go to bed, and you close your eyes, and all you could see was Tetris pieces falling. Uh, does anybody else remember that, or is it just me? I feel like those digital distractions do that to you as well. So you lay in bed, and you can just see all the stuff that you were just dealing with, all these this neurological sensation you just had. And then at some point, your brain starts to settle down, and then you start thinking about those things that that you know you have to deal with tomorrow, and it gets you restless, and you can't get that good sleep. So what I want you to do is get that good sleep. So do a brain dump. Settle your mind down beforehand. So again, if you don't watch TV, you don't have digital distractions at least an hour before bedtime, that's a great idea. But you should sit down in a quiet place, do one of two things. Either grab a yellow legal pad. It doesn't have to be yellow. I just like yellow. So I grab my yellow legal pad and I just write. So I have one of these next to my uh, sitting chair up in my bedroom. Other option would be to take something like a journal. So this five-minute journal has three evening or two evening questions. It says three amazing things that happened to me today. Or how could I have made today better? So it's just something to think about in the process. But I like the yellow legal pad myself. I don't do the evening part of the five-minute journal. I only do the morning part of it. Um, but with the yellow legal pad, I just sit there and I think. I'm like, all right, so what do I got going on tomorrow? I got this appointment. I got this going on. I got to take the kids to school. And I just write down what my day looks like. And then anything that's bothering me. Uh, so, you know, uh, I remember back in the days, and I mentioned this on the show a little bit ago, that, you know, when... I was having financial stress in my life. Uh, I'd sit there and I'd stress about it. I'd stress about it. I'd stress about it. And then someday, you know, after a month or so, I'd finally sit down and write down all my financial issues. Here's what I have in the bank. Here's what I owe. Here's what I have. And it was never as bad as I thought it was. So by writing it down and getting it out there, you get it out of your brain. You settle yourself down a little bit. Uh, and you're able to go to bed a little bit more peacefully. And you also know that when you wake up in the morning, those things, you can start working on them. Uh, you won't forget about them. Because I know a lot of times we sit in bed and we're like, oh, I'm going to do that tomorrow. I can't forget that. I can't forget that. But you don't want to get out of bed to go write it down. So write it down ahead of time. Then go to bed. You'll be a little more peaceful. And we have several other parts to the, to the evening routine that I want to add to that. Uh, but for right now, just think about a brain dump. And the whole design of this 31-day morning routine challenge. Oh, good morning, Tyler. Good morning, Casey. Thanks for joining me. This is the first time I've ever been live in the group. So I didn't know how this would all work. Um, so... The idea of this morning routine challenge is for us to work on one thing every day, not to throw the whole thing together. A lot of people started yesterday with a morning routine, right? Uh, you try to do 30 things and it's too much. I want to add a little bit every day. And sometimes you'll add something like, that's not right for me, don't subtract it, that's fine. But at the end of the 30 days, we'll end up with all the things that we feel like we need in our evening routine and morning routine. Uh, so the first one I want you to try tonight is just a brain dump. And again, yellow legal pad, piece of paper, whatever it might be. Maybe you have even your goals sitting there written down next to you. Spend five minutes, quiet time. You brush your teeth, you're ready for bed. Uh, you sit down, maybe drink some water, maybe not because it might get you up in the middle of the night, whatever it might be. I drink magnesium at night, so that helps me to sleep. So I have my magnesium, do my hygiene routine, sit down in my chair and I just start writing. And I just get anything out of my brain that's in my brain. 
I give it five or six minutes. It's not much. Um, and then every once in a while I go to bed and I'm like, oh, and I get up and I have to go write something else down. It, it happens. Uh, but it's a lot better than to sit there and just stew about it in your brain all night long. So first tip uh, for your morning routine is to get a good evening routine. Start that with a brain dump uh, in the evening. We'll be back on tomorrow morning. Uh, I am... <laughs> I said these weren't going to be live, but yesterday going live, I remembered how much I actually enjoy being live in the morning. Uh, so I think I am going to do the next, at least this next week, uh, live. So I'll be out here 7 a.m. every morning inside the group, not out on Facebook, uh, live so we can get some engagement. So please, uh, you know, I also know that if I have to travel, I'll probably record a few for you. Uh, we've got a few recorded. I just chose to go live. So please engage with me. Please leave comments down below. Uh, I would love to hear if you've, tried brain dumps in the past. If you like doing that, if you don't like doing that, if not, are you going to try it tonight? Please leave me comments. Again, it's a small group in here, but I think we're going to get some really good engagement. Uh, so leave me any kind of comments. Let me know what your thoughts are on the brain dump. Let me know how your morning routine has been going for the first two days of the year. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow morning where we'll uh, talk some more about that evening routine to get ready for your morning routine. Everybody have a great day.